It's nice to have you. you. May be seated at this time. We bring the Bible in just to say that the, the Bible does inform and direct and give us the instruction that we need. If you take out your insert, please, at this time, we'll read together question 69, the question and the answer. This is from the Catechism 2005 of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. And today's topic is how does the Bible speak of the church? So let's say together the question and the answer. How does the Bible speak of the church? The New Testament uses many images, including bride of Christ, flock, the elect, salt, light, yeast, branches of a vine, living stones, people of God, body of Christ, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. These all emphasize the union of Christ and his church. And in line with that, um, I've chosen a hymn we probably don't know very well, 778. Lord, you give, it's not the, it's the Great Commission. Lord, you give the Great Commission, 778. And we're going to sing it uh, to a tune that you know. You know, come thou long expected Jesus. So we're going to sing it to that tune, which is not Abbot's Lee, but don't worry about that. 778. Yeah. 
opening prayers are a time for us to gather our thoughts and hearts that we might uh, open ourselves to God as we come to the table today that we might be vulnerable before God that we will receive from God what we need in a special way this day that is grace that is power, that is peace will come anew into our lives with this in mind let us pray Lord, we thank you that you are here with us this day. We thank you that we have the freedom, that we have the health, that we have the choice to come and be here, and we thank you that we're not here by accident. Lord, we come up to you, the author of life, the creator the engineer of all that is, the one that holds our well-being, the keys to our peace and serenity. Lord, we come to you, the living one, Jesus, the one who knows life and death, having gone through death and resurrection, leading us to life beyond life. And so we come to your throne again, this day. We come to your table again this day. And Lord, there are parts inside of us that we acknowledge. We are hesitant to yield to you. There are thoughts and attitudes and choices that we wonder if we should give up before you. We ask you, Lord, now to help us as we confess our sins, any attitude or action against your will and way that we would confess them openly and fully to you, to know your assurance of pardon anew this day, your forgiveness anew. And so we quietly confess our sins to the Lord. Forgive us, Lord, where we go other places than you for peace, other places when we are in the midst of our own fears and anxieties than to you. Forgive us, Lord, where we don't go to you for informing our attitudes on life, relationships. Forgive us, Lord, and change us to your ways, we pray. And help us to know anew this day that all who trust Jesus, their lives, can know this is a fresh start, a new day, a new experience of life because of what you've done, Lord, at your cross and resurrection. We claim that and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Children's hymn is Lead Me, Jesus, I Will Follow. Very simple song. We'll sing it, I don't know, two or three times. Um, 646 that's for you boys and girls so try and sing along if you can 646 
Come on up to the front. Great to see you all. Some looking happy, some looking confused, some here because they're here, some running. God bless you. Which is a miracle and gift in itself, isn't it, Bertha? Great to have you. How's everybody doing? Uh, you're looking forward to the end of school. <laughs> Parents, are you looking forward to the end of school? <laughs> Grandparents? Okay, just checking, checking out how everybody is. Boys and girls, I've got a word I want you to help me with. And it's just a simple word, but it's, it's maybe harder to understand. I don't know. You tell me. The word is, starts with a B, blame. Tell me what that word means. Go ahead. It's like when you, you do something, but then you say someone else did it. That's pretty good. Anybody else? There's lots of right answers. Adults? Finger pointing. Yeah. Mm. Child, I, did it. I didn't do it. Right? Or whoever. Anybody else? Pass the buck. Pass the buck. Yeah, that's a good one, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so blame happens. Why? Why do you think people blame others? Go ahead. So they won't get in trouble. Anybody else? Adults? So somebody else takes the responsibility. So somebody else takes the responsibility. It's, it's good. We're all here together today. It's, you know, uh, how many boys and girls have you ever blamed anybody else? That's all of us boys and girls. Come on now. Come on now. We're all boys and girls at this time. You should know that by now, right? And, and what God says is he wants us, us to take responsibility because right from the beginning in the garden, you remember what they said when, in the beginning in the garden when, when uh, they were told not to eat from the, fruit, the, fr- the one particular fruit tree? Remember what they did? They ate, didn't they? And, and remember what the guy said? It's her fault. It's not my fault. Remember what she said? It's his fault. Right? Yeah, it just kept, kept on passing it on. And that happens today. We tend to do that. But God wants us to take responsibility for what we do wrong. Because what they should have said was, I broke the rule. I was wrong. Please forgive me. That's the way to do it. And boys and girls, if you can learn that young, you're, <laughs> you're ahead of a lot of us who are older. Okay, well, maybe that's a little too old, but, um, you know, it's important, really, because uh, we're all learning what it means to uh, take responsibility for what we're learning, what we're doing, what we're not doing, how we're, good, how we're doing. Let's pray, shall we? <laughs> Great to have you here today. Can you say the prayer after me, everyone, please? Dear God, help us to follow you, to love you, and when we're wrong, to admit it, and to say, please forgive me, I was wrong. We trust you, God. Help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. You're going out that way. Great to see so many of you. I love sitting on that step. That's my favorite place in church, just for the record. Melody's coming to help us read. Thanks so much. From Genesis 3 and 2 Corinthians 4, just in case you haven't or don't remember that story, she's going to help us. So the first reading will be from Genesis. It's found on page four in your pew Bible. Genesis 
chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman put you here... Sorry, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. The next reading is from the New Testament, from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. That's page on, found on page 1721. 1721. So that's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13, and reading through to chapter 5, verse 1. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Amen. If you take with me your pew Bible and turn to Psalm 130, page 929, we'll read responsively from that psalm. I'll read the first verse, and you the next, and so on. Out of the depths, I cry to you, Lord. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. The gospel reading is from Mark 3, 20 to 25. Page 1492. It's always good to hear pages turning in the Bible. It's a wonderful sound. Make sure you hear it every Sunday.
Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. And when his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, he's out of his mind. The teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebub, by the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? The kingdom, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. No one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven all their sins and all the blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, but is guilty of an eternal sin. Amen. May God help us understand this, His Word. Let us pray. Lord, we trust You. As we seek to honor You and not reject You, as we seek to open ourselves up to You, as we looked to you for help for each of these readings of Scripture, as we receive you, Holy Spirit, anew and say, come and have your way in us. We thank you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The metrical version of Psalm 130 is number 90, the hymn that we're about to sing right now, 90, 90.
take just, take just a moment again, O oh God, quiet before you. We don't have much quiet in our lives, it seems. And when we do take these moments, our minds tend to wander, O oh Lord. You, you know us. So we ask you to help us stay on track with what you have to say today to each one of us. That we truly would receive something we need from your hand. So that we can live our lives according to the truth. According to that which brings peace within. And grace to the community. Mercy. Your ways, your love. We trust you for what that looks like. We thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Summing up uh, one's life attitudes is a tricky business. I, uh, I suppose it's very easy to simplify. Uh, I'm, I'm going to maybe oversimplify today and you bear with me. We, we can see... I think often see others, see people who constantly blame others for their problems. And perhaps you can bring a person into mind who you know is in that category. We can hear others who constantly say, uh, the Newfoundland expression, uh, they're always getting the dirty end of the stick and that they deserve better. So we can hear that in others, blaming, deserving, but when... We say it ourselves. Do we hear ourselves? Do we hear when we are blaming others for what is our personal responsibility? When we hear others saying we deserve better, do we acknowledge our own underlying sense of entitlement? Of course, I'm preaching myself today. It's easy to judge people, isn't it? It's easy to judge those in social assistance. It's easy to judge those who are often on EI. It's easy to judge those who are narcissistic, like that fellow who's been in the news who apparently murdered a a, a student in Montreal uh, just because he needed to be in the limelight more. It's easy to judge the convicted criminal, the addict, the alcoholic, the sexually perverted. We have many examples from our own lives or on the news. We can even point to uh, citizens of Greece who don't want austerity now, but apparently weren't willing in large numbers to pay their income taxes for years, and the government didn't force them to do so, and that's a big part of what's going on. Blaming others for the environment in which we live and how broken it is is not something new. Uh, Melody read well from Genesis 3, that passage that reminds us that when the first rebellion took place in the human race, the first thing said were not, it's my fault. I broke the rules. I sinned. Please forgive me. No. Remember the, remember the first words that were said. It was that woman who gave me. God, she's the one who gave me the fruit and I ate it. Or it was that serpent, that devil that tricked me and I ate it. And so that blame game started with the first couple, putting enmity between the sexes, enmity between God and humanity and just reinforce the battle between human beings and the serpent the devil who loves lying, murdering and theft the blame game continues today I don't think anyone of us would say that it doesn't the question is how or where are we of ourselves being participants in that game one of the key components of seeking to live the Christian faith is taking inventory of what is going on inside us. The Lenten season is often used to pursue this self-reflection. But any time of the year is a good time to take note of what's going on inside, and particularly when we come to the Lord's table, it's a good time for us to reflect on what's going on inside. It takes courage to look inside without being, on the one hand, overly judgmental of ourselves, on the other hand, being overly prideful or overly confident. So if we make a conscious decision to choose not to blame others for what is our personal responsibility, 
Where will that lead us? What will that look like if we are aware of our blaming and want to change? It leads us certainly to our core values. And if those core values contain the experience and reception of God's love, God's truth, then we can live by, God, by grace, treating each day as a gift. Living by grace means being aware of our judgments of others and of ourselves but also seeking to care for and be grateful for those around us, rather than being angry, bitter, or frustrated. When we find ourselves that way, though, as we certainly I often do, when we find ourselves angry, bitter, or frustrated, we can often trace many of the roots back to blame or entitlement when we say to ourselves, not my fault, or I deserve better than this. For some of us, these are our mantras, the things we say to ourselves over and over and over. But if we seek the one who brings an inner peace day by day, we cultivate gratitude and patience toward those around us who are broken and have many faults. And who are they? Everyone. Paul put it this way, All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. That's what we read uh, from 2 Corinthians 4. Grace is the sense that we are receiving a gift, just as people were chosen at the tea yesterday to give gifts, to receive gifts, so God chooses us to give us life as a gift to give away. And Paul goes on, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And that's about attitudes. The attitude of life as a gift to be received day by day, not to be stolen by those broken people around us, which we can do and do to others, but rather to be spread with thanksgiving, remembering that our bodies are decaying. And of course, you don't need a lot of memory of that because many of us have visible, invisible experiences of our bodies as not being forever, let alone maybe next week, who knows. But these bodies are not the last word on our existence. Although we are wasting away on the outside, we are being renewed on the inside. Our troubles and challenges do not often appear to be neither light nor momentary. Those are the words Paul uses. But in comparison to eternity, we must put them in perspective when we do. We experience life again as a gift, our inner peace as a valuable treasure from God through the good news of Jesus Christ and we can fix our eyes that is focus on our spiritual life which only sometimes seems like just a badge we put on our clothing or a decal or an insignia but our spiritual life is really at the core of who we are the core of our life that's why when we come to the table you know when you just think about it and you explain it to the kids it's just a, a nibble really of bread and, and not even a sip of juice it, it's almost it's too small to even be called a snack in our culture because we give larger portions than that but when it is taken when we choose to take these small tiny elements we remember and experience anew what Jesus has done for us at the cross and in the resurrection and it becomes gigantic big when we experience anew the power of God to bring us hope and peace and the grace of life anew. From that sense of grace, then, can flow the forgiveness necessary for a healthy spiritual life. You know, we, we talk at regular intervals, maybe not regularly enough here, about forgiveness. Because when you're withholding forgiveness, it's a way to open yourself up to anger, bitterness, a deepening sense of blaming others and a greater sense of entitlement. When you're withholding forgiveness, it chains you, chains you to the one who has harmed you. 
But when you extend forgiveness, that chain is broken. Such forgiveness does not minimize the sin against you. It simply takes you off the hook of the person who has harmed you and places them on God's hook. As the psalmist said, Lord, you kept a record of sin who could stand. For with you there is forgiveness so that we can with reverence serve you. God establishes and maintains relationship with us through Jesus and continues through forgiveness. We too are to establish our life relationship through grace and forgiveness. There are times when we must leave or call the police, but most of the time, God willing, grace and forgiveness are the way forward. You know, we say in the Lord's Prayer week by week, and some of us say it every day, forgive us our debts or our sins as we forgive our debtors, those who sin against us. That's a familiar line, isn't it, from the Sermon on the Mount, from Jesus teaching us to pray, a line of scripture. If we do not extend forgiveness, we should not expect that forgiveness will be extended to us. But when we do, we receive anew. And so in line with that, I ask again, if I've hurt you or harmed anyone here, I ask your forgiveness, whether by commission or omission or any other way. I invite you to approach me so that there can be a reception of forgiveness. Extend that to those you know and what you have heard uh, secondhand. I also ask forgiveness on behalf of this church community, even if I was not involved. Because we need to walk in forgiveness together. That's the only way that I know to keep going together in a healthy relationship. And this table of the Lord is here to remind us of all that Jesus did to extend forgiveness to us. We are to extend the same to others. And where we do so, it takes courage. And it also is where we see God at work. Come then to the table of the Lord. Lay aside your blame and the attitudes of deserving more. Receive anew the joy of knowing your personal responsibility and the grace of the Lord to live every day as a gift. Let us pray. Help us, Lord, as we come to you to be in touch with the reality of our spiritual lives. To know what is ours. To know where to forgive. Who to forgive. Lord, maybe there's been many years and the people who have hurt us are long gone, whether by distance or death. Help us, Lord, to release them to you. And may this personal time around your table be a time of freedom as we extend forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, Just a few announcements. Um, You'll note, uh, number one, thank you for all those who helped with the garage sale last Saturday, not yesterday, but last Saturday. Uh, The AMSW Presbyterial will be held at St. Andrews, June 20th. All are welcome to that, I think. Uh, There's been a donation given to the Memorial Fund. I I asked uh, several weeks ago if you have favorite hymns, I know I don't choose everybody's hymns because I only choose three or four a week, but uh, if you'd like a favorite hymn, give it in to me. Uh, My only plea is that you'd write it down because I talk to a lot of people at the door (laughs) and at coffee time, so thanks for that. Or send it in to Monica. Um, It's our church picnic next week, and God willing, we'll be outside at Sunshine Park, and hopefully the name will hold up. Uh, we don't know, of course. Uh, we, you'll notice there that we're asking you to um, uh, bring your own uh, folding chairs, dishes, cutlery, and uh, whatever else you'd like to bring. Uh, we've also invited the Korean congregation, and hopefully they'll bring some kimbap 
or something. That's a, well, you'll find out. And, uh, uh, and I understand that uh, Bruce is doing some moose on the barbecue, so come along. And have a good feed and a good service. And that's joined together with uh, St. Andrews. There are memorial services coming in each of the cemeteries, and those are noted. Barbara Ellis is asking uh, for help. You notice we still have a few children here. It's nice to have help with them. Thanks to all those who are helping that. Center for Life, annual Walk for Life, is around Monday Pond. There's some details on that. And a bottle drive for the youth from the back of your insert. Um, don't miss that. If you can bring in a few bags of bottles, that, that goes a long ways towards, uh, that's another way to help all those who are going on mission and uh, youth uh, events this, this summer. Um, I, I'm realizing Catherine Whitehead is, will be moving soon. <laughs> I won't get this accurate or correct. She'll probably be here at the picnic, but we just uh, want to ask God's blessing on you as you take an extended sabbatical, we'll call it that now. And they sold their house, and uh, Catherine's been a faithful elder here, and uh, we just don't want to make sure we miss saying sometime, is, uh, we'll miss you in the next, was it a year and a half? Is that a year. year, something like that. So, so God bless, and uh, there we are. I think that's all the announcements. Um, we'll have our offering at this time. If the ushers will come forward, we'll give to God our gifts, tithes, and offerings.
This is the table of the Lord. Come, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little, would like to love Him more. Come because the Lord loves you, gave Himself for you. Let this bread and this wine be for you the token and pledge of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, all meant for you if you receive them in humble faith. Taste and see that God is good. I encourage you to come if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I encourage you to come to be renewed at His table. Let's... Uh, Turn to 539 in the hymnal. You'll find there the Apostles' Creed. And we will stand to say what we believe together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue to stand as we turn over to 530, just a few pages over, and we'll sing... I come with joy. I hope this isn't getting old for you. I choose this almost every communion. It's because I, I'm, I, I want you to come with joy. <laughs> Sorry.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. <coughs> Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, with joy we give you thanks and praise. You commanded light to shine out of darkness. Divided the sea and the dry land. You created the vast universe and called it good. You made us in your image to live with one another in love. You gave us the breath of life and freedom to choose your way. You set forth your purpose and commandments through Moses called for justice and the cry of the prophets. Through long generations you have been patient and kind to all your children. With a rush of wind and tongues of fire you fulfilled the promise of Christ by sending your Holy Spirit to form the church. By that same Spirit you grace us with gifts, empower us to proclaim your gospel and to serve you in the world. How wonderful are your ways, Almighty God. How marvelous is your name, O Holy One. You alone are God. Therefore, with apostles and prophets and that great cloud of witnesses who live for you beyond all time and space, we lift our hearts in joyful praise and say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We continue to pray. We praise you, most holy God, for sending your only Son, Jesus, to live among us full of grace and truth, sharing our joy and sorrow. He healed the sick and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross, died that we might live. Praise you that he overcame death and has risen to rule the world. He is still the friend of sinners. We trust Him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us and believe that when He comes in glory we will celebrate victory with Him. We thank You that on the night before He died Jesus took bread, gave thanks to You, broke the bread and said, Take, eat. This is My body given for You. Do this for the remembrance of Me. And in the same way He took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in My blood. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. We take this bread and this cup and give you the praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying together, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, on this bread, this wine, that we and all who share in this feast may be one with Christ and he with us. Here we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. In your mercy, accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Fill us with the joy of eternal life, that we may be your faithful people until we feast with you in glory through Christ. With Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, forever and ever. And as our Lord taught us, we now pray using the words found here in the hymnal, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
We encourage you to hold the elements to partake together. Use this time while you're holding the elements to consider again your relationship to others, where there's forgiveness to extend that, where there's blame to release them from that. And we'll partake together past the opportune moment. The body of Christ is broken for you. So, Lord, we take just a moment to think of all you've done for for us at the cross, the lengths you have gone to forgive us in our rebellion and sin. And so we receive what you have done for us. Instead, we take and eat. The same way after the supper, he took the cup said this is the blood of the new covenant which I have established for you. As often as you drink this, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. The 
again, I encourage you as you're holding the elements that we we'll, we'll partake together to uh, take that time to be right with the Lord and right with everyone that you know and making plans if you need to go out today or some other time this week to meet with people in line with that. wine, the grape juice that we use is a symbol of joy a symbol of redemption that happened in and through Jesus Christ and so the blood of Christ is shed for you receive it with gratitude Yeah, we just take a moment to give you thanks, Lord, for what you did on the cross and in your resurrection, for all that you gave that we might receive and understand life, live life 
to the fullest. And so we take and drink together. Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Lord, you know all our thoughts. You know our greatest need. Minds rush ahead. We have many memories. But just for this one moment, we say, simply say thank you for what you're doing today, for what you're accomplishing here, for your work that's planted like seeds in the garden that brings forth fruit and color and beauty. We trust you, Lord. We trust you for those here at the front who are leaders, old and new. We trust you for all of us as followers of yours. We trust you for the future of our congregation. We trust you for our children, those who are at the university, those who are uh, of all the different ages, here today with life decisions ahead with losses behind with all that you have Lord be with those who are in medical need at this time particularly with Neil and others that we mention now in the silence trust you Lord we look to you Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Closing hymn is 556. Now from, let us from the table rise, renewed in body, mind, and soul, with Christ we die and live again, whose selfless love has made us whole. Let's sing and remember the words, 556.
friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours, now and forevermore. Amen.